Hey everybody, do y'all happen to have one of those car jump starters or some kind of an item air compressors that have a built-in power inverter? Sometimes they're 150 watts, sometimes they're 200 watts. In this case, this one here is 300 watts. And a lot of the Schumachers and uh, older Craftsmans would have one of them that's 500 watt. And um, I'll put a link below to some of those Stanleys and other ones. The Stanleys are the best. But this one here is an off-brand. It's actually the same branded as this over here. It is a Voltec, right here, Voltec. So Voltec produced some really, really good stuff for quite a few years. Then, like a lot of companies, they sold their name. They didn't sell their quality. And now, uh, no good. So this thing here is about eight years old. Of course, when the 18-amp-hour battery dies in them, you can either buy a $50 battery or you can buy another one of these for 70 bucks. So you know the story. Then it's a hassle to replace the battery. They have changed the battery cases a little bit. So even the UB1850 battery or 1800 battery, they don't work as well. So um, let's look inside of here because this is a process about salvaging. Now, sitting in here is a outlet plug, a power switch, which I've removed the power switch and a uh, on and off light and here sets a 300 watt power inverter now one of the things that we have to do because we have no choice is to remove the items on the back so that we can get this pulled apart in its entirety so here is the power light and you can extend that cable but it looks like it comes at a pretty good length and here is the power cables now these might be i'm not going to guarantee it polarized it does have a polarized plug on it what we're doing with this is we're actually going to put this in my wife's car so these are safe to be sealed up in a very tight container and they're built to handle that temperature to start with that's the reason i'm telling you about this hack here is that's what we want to look at so this was on one end of it there's a big set of jumper cables on both ends and a battery in the middle and all that crap so air compressor had all of it in there now we're going to take a look. That is the polarized side, so that'd be the common. They don't have a ground. Note that. But you can ground that if you choose, but you don't really need to for a 300-watt item. So, and there's the hot side. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take the hot side. We're going to cut it first. And we'll go ahead. And this has been sitting for about five years. I actually, I'm, going to do a, I'm doing a video right now, not even knowing if the damn thing works. All right? So... That's the hot side, and I'm going to go ahead, and it might not be the hot side. I'm sure they probably guessed just like I'm doing when they assembled it, because in this category, it doesn't really matter. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get this, and we're going to isolate it off. Now, we're going to, when we reuse this plug, we will reuse that plug, and we'll mount it in her dashboard. We want to make sure we have everything as accurate as possible. So this one here would be the negative side. We want to mark them off just in case you don't know. You go ahead and bust them off of there and get these wires stretched out. Now here's the power cables on it. And all this requires is a 30 amp fuse. This one here. That's a good enough location if you see here for me to get a 30 amp fuse. Let me pause this right quick and I'll grab one. Okay, as you can see now in the video, we have a fuse link. We have two butt connectors. You want to use a good quality. Don't use bad ones. And we have two pieces of shrink tape pre-sized for my need. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take the red wire and we're going to cut it back about probably three inches in this one's case. We want to make sure that we have plenty of space. Now, this is nothing but about eight gauge. It doesn't need to be anything more than that. So we'll strip that back, and you can see it's tinned copper. And it will fit in the number 12s. Give it a little twist like that. And we'll put a heavy crimp on it. Now, this doesn't pull that much. 30 amps is not going to be anything to worry about in a butt connector. You want to go, don't want to ever go over 50 amps in a butt connector because they just can't handle it. And then here's our cord. Now, this one's 10 gauge. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually cut it fairly short for the purpose. We don't want to uh, end up with 
any problems in that neighborhood. Now, let's see if my shrink tape is going to fit properly, and it will. Let's get it all the way down. Because we're main goal is protecting this from itself getting hit by anything and knocked loose. Now I'm going to take this and go ahead and strip it back a little further and I'm going to put a real tight little bend in that with my fingers so that it fits real snug inside of that butt connector. We'll get in there and kind of work it in. Now it's in there good and I'll crimp that down. And you ain't got to worry your 30 amp fuse on here or 35. You can get a 35 amp fuse for them. 35 is the accurate number for handling this. We're going to do the same over here and cut it short. The shorter the run, the less resistance, and we ain't going to have to worry about none of that. So you can do this with up to a 400 watt. Higher than 400 watt, you're going to have to work over here, and you're going to have to start using different style fuses like maxi fuses, um, a and L fuses of different types, and in this case, I would use just the mini A and L fuses with the safety body on them because it's inside your vehicle. All right, so we have that. We'll get this tucked up in there. Make sure it goes in there and don't have any wasted wire effect. And I use the table on that handle right there so that I can make sure I get plenty of torque. You want to make a good solid connection on that. Then we're just going to make sure that's nice and tight there. Tight wire. We'll slide this on it. Get these out of the way. And put that up in there. Now, you're probably saying I can buy one of these little inverters for a decent little price. They're not that expensive. And you're probably 100% correct. But I'm kind of like, you know what? Why throw so much toxic waste away? And you can find these things with dead batteries at the Goodwill, the garage sales, everything for like a buck. So why would you go spend 50 bucks on an inverter? That cannot handle the high temperatures. Now you got to remember, this is designed. Look at that fan. This is designed for very high temperatures because it's in an enclosed compartment in here. Its entirety of its breathing is actually just done internally. It has it has a very good style capacitors in it. You can't exactly get that just anywhere. So let me grab a torch and I'll shrink tape that up. Having to get the cameraman to quit trying to uh, do a microscopic view of this. I want y'all to see the whole thing. So we're going to go ahead and use some shrink tape here. And notice how I use the torch when I do the shrink tape. Never leave that thing on. Or even a hair dryer, don't leave it on there. Because you'll cause it to split where it goes on to different surfaces. Give it time to work itself down. All right. So, now we have this full contact right there. We've got our two power wires there. And we have pushed and removed these out of here. So, now we have that where we can take these off and use clips. And that's what I'm going to do here for now. It's not permanent. We will move up to a full solder joint on this. But, this is designed. You can cut a hole in your dashboard. To fit this exact item and it will pop right in now you can also buy the kind that are used differently than this but it'll snap in because it's like a standard switch with the spring loaded so we're just going to use a couple of terminals on it for now and I'm going to remove the solder using the torch yes that's what I'm going to do you got to do it quick. Yeah, I see some melting. Knock the solder off. Nice and clean. Knock it off there. Didn't get it off on that side. Got some of it off. 
So there we go. All right, now, test fit it with your terminals. See how well it's going to go. Looks pretty good right there. Looks usable right there, and you can solder your terminals on after the fact. Okay. I'll clean this up a little bit with a knife. Get any pieces of wire off of it. Make it nice and easier to use. Same thing on this side. Now I have a protected terminal here. And I have an unprotected here. There's your two different options. In my case, I will be using protected terminals on both sides. Now what I'm going to do to start with is I will take my pen. Figure out where I left it at. And I will go ahead and mark my terminals like my original plan is on the wiring here. So I've got a plus and I've got a negative. We already know that the positive is the narrow one. So if you ever wonder about this in your house circuit, polarized means the common's the wider blade. That's the plus on that side over there. So we'll get this starting with the plus. Get this clean back a little nicer. We get plenty of wire up in there. Fold it over like I usually do. Drive it up in there until you just see it come into the opening on the other side. Good. We'll do the negative. We have the common side. Same thing, get it just up in there to where you can see it come through to the other side and give it a good firm crimp. Now on these you don't have to, just make sure you give them a good pull. You don't have to worry about how they come out. Now there's the positive side and I will drive that down. There you go. There's the negative side. Common. Work that one on. And now we have the outlet that can fit in your dashboard right there. Power switch is the same thing, but you'll notice it's not threaded. Many of them are, but it's not threaded. So what I would be doing is replacing it with a standard switch, a toggle or a rocker switch that can handle 20 amps. 20 amps is all you need in all reality for this because this is just a switch circuit. It has a relay inside here that handles everything else. This you can mount on the dash or you can find a different 12 volt source and run that to a light that tells you it's powered on. So we're gonna go ahead and hook this up. This will turn red if it's in fault. It'll turn green if it's in run mode. You can take electrical tape and write, uh, tape this up real nice if you like. And over here, we have a lamp. If I can get Daniel not to try to film the screw heads, we'll be all right. We're going to lay everything out, and then I'm going to pull power from my 15-amp testing circuit that I have overhead. This is where I test a lot of my items in here. So we're going to clamp onto there. Now, there's no fuse in yet. I will put a fuse in, and if we blow the fuse, we know there's a problem right from the start. There's a 30-amp fuse, and if you don't feel safe with a 30, you put a 25 in there. If you're only going to use a laptop that pulls 65 to 80 watts of electricity, or if you're only going to run a couple of items that's 150 watts, well, just put a 25 in it. It's not going to hurt anything. There we go there. Had a very light arc. That means it's taking power. And let's go ahead and look for this little light right here for power. They may not have good enough contact points here. One thing about DC current, you want to make sure you got real good contact. There we go. Definitely a bad switch. So we'll we'll be replacing that for sure. Now, over here, we're going to go ahead and plug in. Notice I'm being careful because I haven't protected that circuit yet. And let's take a look and see what happens. 
110 volt light running off of this little inverter right here and all of it was I picked up three of these for a dollar a piece at the Goodwill so that's a 110 volt 300 watt inverter it has very good components inside of it and it's designed for high temperature it even has a few mount screw holes you'll see here to where you can bolt it up under your dash but make sure you do leave it breathing room and there you go guys save it don't throw it away look how simple that's why I have all this extra stuff right here and that's what we do so not too bad huh it powers it fine with what we have all right y'all be good